Asthma is a disease that can flare up into attacks without much warning sometimes. So if you or your child has asthma, it's important to make sure you're prepared for any flare-ups or attacks that happen when you're away from home. So this week I'm going to talk about travelling away from home with your asthma. But first, if you do find my podcast helpful, please do click the follow button and also share it with friends and colleagues. As with most of the Asthma Spotlight podcasts, this one is intended mainly for parents and people with asthma, but will also be helpful for healthcare professionals. So what's the problem? Just imagine that you or your child are away from home, possibly abroad, and that your asthma flares up with an attack. What would you do if there isn't a doctor available at short notice, or while you're waiting for a doctor? Also, what would you do if you don't have sufficient medication? That would clearly be very worrying and frightening. So how can you prepare yourself or your child to deal with an attack while away from home. Okay, so to start with, there are five important things that you'd need to know about when, um, when you're away from home. And these are first, how to prevent asthma attacks and infections. Next, an asthma self-management plan. Then thirdly, you should have enough medication, and that's essential. You should also have a way to measure your asthma control. So measurement equipment should be available for you to measure how bad an attack is. And the fifth thing is to ensure that before you travel, that you're up to date with immunizations like for flu or for COVID. So the first thing, and most importantly, in my view, based on lots of research, is that prevention is always better than having to deal with emergencies. So asthma attacks and infections which could cause asthma attacks should be prevented as much as possible. And this includes taking preventive asthma medication and also preventing infections by wearing a mask when, for example, in an aeroplane or a crowded bus or a crowded place, as well as ensuring that you wash your hands and use alcohol gel as needed. Research has proved that people with well-controlled asthma are less likely to have attacks. So you should, of course, follow your doctor's advice and take your prescribed preventer medication as advised. What sometimes happens is that people, when they're on holiday, get complacent and they stop taking their medication. And as a result, they end up having an asthma attack. So in my view, it's essential that you also have an up-to-date self-management plan for your asthma. And this will have been provided for you by your doctor or your asthma-trained nurse or asthma educator. This will help to guide you or anyone responsible for looking after your child while away from home. The plan should have details of your regular treatment and what to use if you have an attack. You also need to be able to recognize that an attack might be developing. So your plan should indicate the signs and symptoms of a developing asthma attack. It should also tell you what to do urgently. Now your plan will also tell you when you need to call for help from a doctor or to go to an emergency department. And in the case of children going away without parents, those caring for or responsible for caring for the child must be provided with a copy of the plan A few printed versions of your plan, as well as a copy on a mobile phone, would enable you to refer to and share the plan with anyone you seek help from while away. The next important thing is to ensure that you or your child have enough medication, including spare inhalers, for preventive and reliever treatment. A spacer, if that's what you use, a course of cortisone tablets, if those are included in your self-management plan, And if you or your child also have anaphylaxis, then you should include up-to-date adrenaline injectors and antihistamine uh, tablets, which would be included within your plan. As I said earlier, masks can help to prevent inhaling infections, 
and use of alcohol hand gel and hand washing also helps to reduce the chance of picking up an infection while traveling. So some alcohol gel should be included in your luggage. Then, in my view, if you're away from home, you should be able to do some measurements to help you to know how bad an attack is. So if your plan includes use of peak flow measurements to check how tight your air passages are, then you should also take your peak flow meter with you. And a very important piece of information that you should know is what your best peak flow reading is. And in that way, you can always tell if your air passages are getting tighter because your peak flow will be, getting, will be decreasing. And if your peak flow is below 60% of your best, then you need emergency help. It's easy to calculate this level. Just multiply your best level by 0 0.6 and use that number in your plan as your 60% level. If this is not on your plan, it would be helpful to discuss the use of peak flow with your doctor or your asthma nurse, and if they agree, then get a prescription or buy a peak flow meter. Now you should have instructions on how to check your levels, and there is a, a video that I've done which is available on YouTube, which I'll put a link to in the, in the text for this um, podcast, which will uh, help you to understand how to use a peak flow meter to guide and tell you when your asthma is going out of control and when to worry. I also think that an oximeter would be helpful to help you decide how severe an attack is and whether you need emergency assistance. And emergency assistance would be needed if your oxygen level is dropping down to below 91% or if it's dropping down towards that level. So the next thing to plan for will depend on where your or your child is going. Clearly, if you're going to be somewhere remote where there may not be available emergency services, like in a very rural location, like on a safari or in a camping site somewhere, your planning may include insurance for emergency evacuation if necessary. In either event, it's a good idea to take out emergency insurance cover when traveling because it could be very expensive to get care when away from home. To ensure that emergency treatment for asthma or anaphylaxis is included in the insurance. And if your child is going away, it's important to make sure that the adults responsible for them are fully aware of what triggers your child's asthma, how to recognize attacks and what to do. And this information should be included in the written asthma plan from your doctor. Now, another thing to think about if you're traveling abroad is to find out what the traditional foods are like and what the ingredients in these traditional foods are in your destination. Because if you or your child are allergic to certain foods and those are predominant or very common in the foods in the areas where you're going to, you need to be very clear on how to explain to restaurant waiters or chefs um, what you cannot eat. So something else to be aware of when traveling is to find out what season it is in the destination. Now this might be important if you're allergic, for example, to pollens or molds that might be present in the destination because they happen to be in a different season to your own country. A few other things related to travel are to do with oxygen, activities and pollution. So if you or your child needs to take oxygen treatment as part of your treatment for your asthma, and you need this on an aeroplane, for example, you must inform the airline before you travel because there are very strict rules about what you can and what you can't take with you and what they need to supply for you. Regarding activities that you're planning at the destination, it's important to find out whether your asthma could be a possible problem for you to participate. For example, if you're planning to do any deep sea diving, the company that you are engaging to take you deep sea diving may have rules which forbid you to participate because of your asthma. So do check before you book if expensive physical activity holidays whether you will be allowed for safety reasons 
to do these. Also, be aware of potential pollution at your destination, because this could clearly make your asthma worse. If air pollution is a potential problem at your destination, then you should be aware of that, and you should take adequate precautions, which might include wearing proper protective masks when out and about. And also, for example, if there are going to be open fires in your accommodation, or the local conditions are such that you might be exposed to substances that could could aggravate your asthma, like, for example, chlorine in swimming pools. You should be aware of these things and should take advice from your doctor on how to prevent asthma attacks if you are exposed to this sort of pollution. If you're travelling by plane, your medication should be in your carry-on luggage and not in the hold. And this is obvious, because you may need to use it during the flight, and sometimes luggage does get lost. So your treatment should always be with you personally, as well as a copy of your prescription or a letter from your doctor, because officials at uh, customs might need to verify that your medication is prescribed, as well as providing information for anyone that you might consult in an emergency. If you are going to be somewhere without ready access to medical help, and you are someone whose asthma flares up when you have a chest infection, your doctor may prescribe a course of antibiotics with clear instructions for emergency use if there are going to be long delays in getting help. Now, I've spent a lot of time on safari doing wildlife photography, and these camps are often only accessible by light aircraft, which cannot access the camps at night sometimes. And it's important to find out what facilities are available in the camps for management of medical emergencies. And, for example, if you need electricity for any of your treatment, so if you need to be on nebulizer treatment regularly, this may not be possible in the camps because there may not be electricity available. So do find out before you travel. In addition, in these remote areas, it's very important to have emergency evacuation insurance, which you may not need. However, in an emergency, having the ability to get to a hospital uh, in an emergency might save yours or your child's life. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is to remind you how to tell if you're having an asthma attack if you're away from home. So then you can follow the instructions that your doctor or asthma trained nurse or educator have included in your asthma self-management plan. Now, asthma attacks might come on without any warning at all. But generally, you'll have asthma symptoms that have increased slowly over a number of days or even weeks. And that's cough, wheeze, shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing, particularly if these symptoms are happening at night. Then you're probably having an asthma attack and you need to take action as early as possible. Your self-management plan provided by your own doctor should tell you which of your medications is to be used when this happens. It's usually either a reliever inhaler or an inhaler that has a combination of a reliever and a preventer. This is the so-called MART or anti-inflammatory reliever therapy. And your emergency therapy may also include a cortisone tablet or a course of cortisone tablets. And these should be taken as soon as possible because they do take up to six hours before they start working. Your peak flow and oxygen levels will also be helpful in telling you whether you're having an attack and also how bad that is. So do make sure that you or your child has a current, up-to-date self-management plan and that you both understand what to do and when emergency help is needed. I did cover this in a previous podcast. That was podcast number 39. So do listen to that one. An important clue that you may need emergency help is if your relief medication is not giving relief or if that relief is not lasting for more than four hours. Another clue 
is if your peak flow has dropped below 60% of your best reading or the other clue, as I said earlier, is that your oxygen level um, might be dropping down close to or below 91%. So in summary, it is always best to prevent attacks and that means that you should follow your doctor's advice to take your preventer medication as prescribed. If you're not on a preventer medication and you've only been prescribed a reliever inhaler without a combined preventer, then you should discuss this with your doctor because the evidence currently that most people um, agree with is that you should be on a preventer medication either as needed or on a regular basis. Plan yours or your child's trip carefully to include finding out what the local facilities, what the local food and what uh, the local um, pollution levels are like and also what's available at the destination that you're planning to travel to. Always travel with all of your medication plus spares and keep this with you all of the time when travelling to your destination. Always have a copy or a few copies of your self-management plan for your asthma. Of course, make sure that it's up to date before you travel, and this would require a consultation with your doctor or asthma-trained nurse. And if you have anaphylaxis, you should also have an anaphylaxis self-management plan, which would also be provided by your own doctor or by your specialist looking after your allergy. Now, for more information on recognising and uh, managing asthma attacks, please do listen to earlier Asthma Spotlight podcasts, in particular podcast number 5, number 15 and number 39. And if you have a peak flow meter, watch my talk on YouTube, which is um, provided as a link in the description of this podcast.